Today I've got a nail repair for you with a patch and you might want to push pause and go fix a snack or a drink because this one's going to be quite long and I apologize. Here we go. Well hello my friend and welcome to my channel. Today I've got something a little different. I have had an injury to this thumbnail. Um, looks pretty good doesn't it? But it's not. It's very broke. So I've got out all my stuff that I'm going to be using to repair this nail. Now I've already done one video on nail repair. I don't think it's changed that much, but I thought I would go ahead and do it one more time. Just in case. I always use the Swiss silk. I like it because it's got adhesive on it. Um, when you cut out your little pieces, um, you just peel that off and you stick it on. So we'll get to that in a little bit. I also use this little IBD gel brush. It's a number six flat. I use that to smooth out my gel glue. I also have a little tiny, tiny orange wood stick. I've got my gel cure. This is from ASP. I get it at Sally's. I think I got almost all of this, the actual stuff for repairing it from Sally's. But this makes the um, gel like dry quick, super fast. Love it. We need to get some more. We're starting to get low. And this is the glue I use. This is the lightless gel. Now they call it gel, but it's not gel. It's glue. And it's also by ASP. I have my little scissors out to trim my piece of silk wrap off. And I also have my little nippers just in case I need those. I will, however, have to start here with some acetone. And I do want to use pure acetone on this. I want this nail totally clean so that when I do my patch, it's on there for a little bit because I don't like having to do patches. So to get started on that, I've got my, this is how I always take my nail polish off. I use these little finger clippers and a cotton round that I have cut into fourths. So I'm going to show you all that real quick. Well, first, we've got the most important thing, the glove for the other hand to protect the mani. Let's get this rascal on and get down to business. I won't tell you how I broke my thumbnail because it's quite stupid. I will say that stupid me thought something needed cleaning, so, you know, it was a cleaning incident. That's all I'm going to say. So I always wet it down with the acetone. And I put it on really good, making sure that it's covered all the way. And then I put my little clip on it. And I normally do one whole hand at a time, but today I'm just messing with this bad boy. Um, we're going to let this soak. And I normally let it sit for, for, I don't know, five to seven minutes. And um, I go watch YouTube videos and whatnot while I'm waiting on it to work. And then normally it comes off like a dream and I don't have nail polish all around my fingers. So I will be right back when we get to that point. Okay, I'm back. It's been about, I don't know, seven or eight minutes. I'm going to take my little clip off and look. Almost have a, all of it's gone even without me uh, doing my... And normally they don't get stuck in here. It's kind of a rare occurrence. But you just... Get that, get that nail polish off and get that fingernail all nice and clean. Now I will point out, while I do have a naked nail, I will, first of all, let's address that break. Look at that. That's a pretty good break. It comes all the way over to here. I mean, that's pretty, pretty substantial. And it's back in the meaty part. It is way back behind the meat. So, anyway. What I was saying was while I have a naked nail, I will go ahead and tell y'all why I have these terrible ridges, and I mean, they're bad. I had acrylic nails put on way back in the day um, for my wedding <laughs> back in 1989, <laughs> and I completely lost both of my thumbnails, and both of them have issues. This one has like major divots and ridges in it that grow out. This one over here, take this off. This one has a permanent split that starts right in the middle and goes all the way back here. And it normally stays pretty short. You can't really see it, it's, but it's there. And it's always there. If you ever see that, if I have naked nails and you see that and you think, what's going on with her nail? That's it. They have some permanent damage from acrylic nails. And that is why we do natural nails now. 
So what I like to do to get started on this is I do take my uh, six-sided buffer from Revlon. It's called the Revlon Shape and Buff. And I start off with the, not the very rough side, but the kind of other rough side. <laughs> and I just kind of smooth it out a little bit. Try to get it to, you know, behave. Because I want a nice, flat surface to work on. Let me grab my alcohol. because I cut all mine down beforehand. But I'm gonna give that a squirt and just wipe it down. Get all that dust off of it from filing. And yep, we've got some yellowing going on with this nail, but uh, I'm not surprised because we keep polish on it all the time. Alrighty. I'm gonna go get a paper towel and I'll be right back. Okay, I've got my paper towel and I have got my silk wraps open. And I don't cover the whole nail. I do cover a good bit of it. And I just find a piece that, you know, you tell I've definitely used a bunch of this because I've got little cut pieces off of it. But I normally work in like little square sections. It just seems to be what works for me. Um, a lot of people do like to go on and cover the whole nail with a solid patch. Try to get this to lift up on the side. Just kind of get it going, get it started. And you know, I'm always amazed that having nails doesn't make you able to do this sort of thing easier. You think it would be easier since you have something to grab with. Now, I'm going to try to get that all the way over to my free edge or my to the edge of my nail. And see how nice that is to have an adhesive. It just sticks. And this nail's gonna be a little wonky, but I just want to get it to grow out past the point of hurting. <laughs> I know we've all been there. Everybody's had a broke nail. Okay, now that I've got my patch down and it's smoothed down, I use my other fingernail and I just like to smooth it. Make sure I don't have any bubbles or anything. Next, I'm going to take my lightless gel, and I'm going to run a bead. Hopefully, this one's trying to act up on me. I had to get a um, pen after it, which it looks like I'm going to have to do again. Okay, I can't find my pen. I'll be right back. I really did think I was prepared for this video. I got all my stuff out. Here we go. I'm just sticking that pen way down in there. Make sure it's open. I've already done this once. I thought we were ready to go. See, a toothpick's too fat, so that does me no good. So, I'm gonna put that in there. So like I was saying, we're gonna try to get a bead of this. And this is a brand new bottle. There we go. I've got a bead of it, and I went down the center of my nail with it. I'll put the cap on it so it doesn't dry out. I have a little handy cup of acetone sitting right here off to the side, and I'm going to dip my little brush, my gel brush in it, and then I'm just going to, very carefully, because I really do not want to get this stuff on my skin, brush over this, and I like to use the brush, a lot of people use the little tip, and I do take the glue all the way up. Um, all the way to the top. But I like to use the brush. A lot of people use the little plastic tip applicator that comes with it, but I've never had much luck with that. Now, immediately I take my brush and I twirl it around, mushing it into the bottom with the acetone so that the glue doesn't dry onto my brush. I have had it dry on there and you have to do some soaking. But these are pretty resilient little brushes. This is the only one I've ever bought. And I can guarantee you I have done more patches than I care to mention. You can also take your little um, safety pin or stick pin or whatever you're using. 
and I do like to keep doing that because I do not want my brush getting hard as a rock. That does me no good. Okay, I'm gonna let that sit and sit in there while we, and I'm gonna get this pen out of the way because I do not want to get stuck to it. I have a habit of doing that sort of thing. But now is the time when you use the gel cure from ASP. I like to shake mine up because normally it's pretty good time in between me using it and just spray two or three sprays on it and you're gonna let that dry and it really does dry super fast. Activator Gel Cure. This this is probably my second bottle of this stuff. I love it. I love anything that's gonna make it go faster because repairing a nail is not what I want to be doing. I want to be painting my nails not fixing one so you gotta take the good with the bad, right? I'm gonna move this over here. Okay, and that is totally dry now. It's totally dry. We're having difficulties, people. We're having to prop things up. There we go. Okay, good go. Alright, that is in there good now. So, um, what I like to do now, well, actually, let's go ahead and trim some of these little fuzzy extras off. And that's where your little cuticle nippers come in. And I can tell this break is way back in the skin area because I am feeling a little bit of uh, heat <laughs> from the glue. Um, I don't know if it's heat. Maybe it's just a little bit of tingling. I don't know. So I've got that a little bit more smooth. We're going to run another bead of this down the center of my nail. If I can get it to come out again. There we go. Okay, cap back on. We're going to grab our brush again. Tap off the excess of the acetone. And I'm just going to brush, just like I did last time. Brush this on there. And my nail's pretty wonky anyway, but we're going to do some filing here in a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and hit that with a cure. Two sprays. And I'm going to let this dry. And I'm going to clean on my brush a little bit more, just like I did last time. I just kind of do like a little twirling, mushy twirling motion. I'm trying to break that glue up and get it all off. We're going to come back here in just a minute and we're going to do a little bit of buffing and filing. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm going to do my final cleanup on my brush because I am done using it, I think. <laughs> but I did the twirly swirly thing with it again. And then I like to pull it out to my paper towel. And that's why I have one of these little orange wood sticks so I can just go through the bristles and make sure that there's no glue trapped up in there because I don't want it to be hard as a rock next time I need it because I will need it again. We all know that breaks happen and I don't want to have to buy another brush. This brush wasn't really, <clears throat> excuse me, super cheap but it wasn't really expensive either. But that is nice and soft and I'm going to put it back in its little protective holder. I like to pinch it and get most of the bristles in there going straight one way. And I like to store it just like that for the next time. So we're done with that and that. Sorry, I'm bumping you guys. I'm slapping y'all around again. What's wrong with me? It's not how you treat your friends, Tim. You? Okay. So we've got that done. We're done with our scissors and nippers. Try to get some of this extra junk out of the way. Now we're going to go back to my fat phone. Now you guys know I'm a crystal file. I love my my Germanicure fingernail file and we will be using that but to do the heavy heavy duty stuff I still go back to this even though I'm sold on the Germanicure I still I still always go back to this I'm going just kind of across the end there were some little fuzzies still on the end now I'm going to tell you another thing I do when I do this <laughs> I normally file this back to way back. Um, I don't know that I'm. I don't know if I'm going to do it today. We'll see. 
but I do that because the shorter it is, the less chance I have of rebumping it and cracking my patch. So I'm going to take that buffer side and just kind of try to start smoothing this out. And there is no real rhyme or reason as to how I do it. I just do some, do some filing and buffing back and forth. And this is the big, the big buff. This is to get the big lumps out. And I do take my finger and feel. And since my nail's so lumpy anyway, it's going to feel lumpy. And see, this side's not going to break on it, so I'm really not worried about taking too much off over here. I don't want to uncover the patch, because it's over there too. Now that I've done that, I'm going to clean up brush out and just dust some of that off so I can see. Okay, and then we're going to follow the steps. It's kind of hard to read mine. This is step one. And I'm just going over and around the side. Now, I have had patches last doing them like this. I have had them last up to a month. But I've also done them where they lasted just a couple of days because sometimes I'm hard on my stuff. I'm hard on me, hard on my nails. Okay, that was step one. We're going to go on to step two because I don't want to file too much of the glue down, but I want to get it smooth so that when I paint it, it doesn't look obvious that I have a major break. That is step two, and then we're going to go to step three, which is my last step. I don't do step four. And I hope this isn't making y'all dizzy. I didn't think about all the movement <laughs> that went on with this nail fixing it. But I figured there might be somebody out there that needed something like this. I actually broke this nail yesterday, and I didn't even, I didn't do nothing to it. I didn't put no glue on it, nothing. I just left it. And, um, the <laughs> And I made it through work today without making it. And it probably wouldn't have been this far over if I had. But you can see that is solid. It's not moving anymore. But it is a good side break. And y'all can see that way. That's way down in the. Whoops, sorry. That's way down in the meat. That's a meaty hurt right there. So I'm going to break out my Baroness X cuticle stuff that I always love to use just so I can make this not look so yucky. I want you guys to see my patch without looking all dry and funky up in here. I did show this in another video not too long ago and uh, you know the Burt's Bees um, in the little tin, I like that too, but this is what I keep at my manicure table, so we're going to do that in, rub it in, I normally don't rub it in, but I am today, because I just want to show you guys, look at that, we've got a solid nail again, so that is how I fix a broken nail, <laughs> I hope this helped someone, I hope you enjoyed it, leave me a comment down below, oh, I will go through with my Dramanicure here in a little bit just to make sure I don't have any wonkiness going on down here to catch on stuff. But, like I was saying, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something. Uh, leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think about this and what you do when you break your nails, what you use. I also have used the Orly Rescue system also, and that's good for a lot of things. Like that, I use that a lot when I have peeling. just this little powder and I use the brush on gel resin from Sally's. I think I got both of these products at Sally's but I used up whatever came with this and now I just I'm using the brush on gel and you just brush it on 
and then dip your finger down in the powder. And I will do that if I get some peeling. Here lately I've been doing really good because I'm using my nail teaks. So we don't have to. But if I do get a peely, I will, I will demo this for you guys also. So that is it for today. I hope this didn't drag on too long. <laughs> Leave me a comment down below. Thumbs up. And I will talk to you soon. Until next time, be good to yourself.